time, I call the member for Bradfield. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. The National Broadcasting Legislation Amendment Bill 2010 is a wholly unnecessary piece of legislation. The three core elements of this legislation are all, in my view, poor ideas. The first idea is to resuscitate the position of staff elected director. The second idea is to impose a formal blanket ban on former politicians and senior political advisers being appointed to the board of the national broadcasters. And the third poor idea is the process set out in the bill for what is described as merit-based appointment. Mr Deputy Speaker, unfortunately, this piece of legislation is evidently the product of a fairly desperate moment casting around trying to fill out a rather thin-looking policy in advance of the 2007 election. And clearly, somebody said, we must have a policy on broadcasting. Quick, what are we going to put in there? Let's come up with some ideas. Let's look like we're taking action. This bill, Mr Deputy Speaker, emerges from the same policy factory that gave us the Citizens' Assembly, and evidently a process with about as much rigour. What I want to do, Mr Speaker, is address all three of the rather poor ideas that are inherent in this bill. And the first of those is the reinstatement of the position of staff elected director at the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Mr Deputy Speaker, there is an extraordinary claim in the second reading speech offered in justification for this measure. Quotes, the staff appointed director is often the only individual with the expertise to examine the advice to the board from the ABC's executive. Close quotes. Mr Deputy Speaker, that really is quite a remarkable claim, that there is nobody else on the board of the ABC who has the expertise to examine the advice to the board from the ABC's executive. It is a proposition, I would suggest, which cannot be substantiated on even the most cursory examination. If there is a desire, as there may very sensibly be, to have people on the board of the ABC who have expertise and experience in matters of broadcasting, then by all means appoint people with such experience. And there is, in fact, uh, a number of people on the board who have such experience. I look, for example, at the uh, resume of uh, Dr Julianne Schultz, who is on the board of the ABC. And her resume says that she began her career as a reporter with the ABC. She has held senior editorial roles and worked as a media columnist and director of corporate and digital strategy. I know Dr Schultz a little bit, or at least I've come across her at conferences, and she's uh, clearly a person of ability. But the more general point is this, Mr Deputy Speaker. It is clearly open to the minister to appoint, as he has on this occasion, persons with industry experience able to bring to bear that experience in examining the advice to the board from the ABC's executive. And it is really quite an extraordinary argument that the justification for having a staff elected director is that that person is the only one on the board with the expertise to examine the advice to the board from the ABC's executive. It is a proposition which does not stand up to even a moment's scrutiny. And the reason that it's such a threadbare proposition, Mr Deputy Speaker, is, as is often the case, it is not the real reason why this government is legislating to seek to reinstate the position of staff elected director. The staff elected director is inevitably, regardless of the personal capacities of the individual who succeeds in being elected. The staff elected director inevitably is expected by the persons who elect him or her to be an advocate for their interests. That is the way that elected positions operate, Mr Deputy Speaker. And to have a person on the board who is subject to that set of expectations, that set of pressures, is inconsistent with basic principles of corporate governance which require that directors are motivated by a consideration of what best serves the interests of the organisation and what best allows the organisation 
to deliver on its mission, to deliver on its objective of providing outstanding broadcasting to serve the interests of the Australian community. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, the proposition that there ought be one member of the board who is elected to represent the sectional and specific interests of ABC staff is a poor one. It is a poor one. The person who is charged with selecting the, star, the, the directors of the ABC is, as the law stands today and should remain, in respect of every director, the minister. And the minister is the person who brings to bear the responsibility on behalf of the parliament and ultimately on behalf of the people of Australia who have elected that parliament. The minister is the person who brings to bear the decision making as to selecting a board, as to selecting directors who are best able to direct the ABC in its mission, in performing its mission of delivering outstanding broadcasting services to serve the Australian community. Let me turn, Mr Deputy Speaker, to the second very poor idea which is contained within this bill, which is the proposition that there ought be an automatic and blanket ban on former politicians and on former senior political advisers from being eligible to be appointed as directors of the boards of the ABC or the SBS, the Special Broadcasting Service. Let me quote from evidence given by Donald Macdonald, the former chairman of the ABC, to a recent Senate inquiry where he said, quote, I think it is an extraordinary provision, frankly, to suggest that somebody, having served the public as a member of parliament, is, as a result of that, contaminated to the extent that they cannot provide useful service to the public by being on the board of the ABC. I think that is not only extraordinary but profoundly offensive in, in respect to former politicians who have been on the ABC board. He further went on to observe that in his time on the board, as chairman of the board, he was well served and the board was well served by having as two directors the former Labor Premier of South Australia, John Bannon, and the former Liberal Federal Cabinet Minister, Ian McPhee. Mr Macdonald said in giving his evidence, quotes, they brought a great deal of experience, judgment and balance to considerations, particularly in matters to do with dealing with the government and with lobbying for funding, because that is a big chunk of the board's responsibility once every three years. So there is the voice of direct experience, Mr Deputy Speaker. It is in fact no bad thing in some instances to have former politicians serving on the ABC board. I was particularly interested, Mr Deputy Speaker, to see the view of the CPSU, the Community and Public Sector Union, expressed by another witness before that Senate committee, Dr Van Barneveld, who had this to say. It is simply the view of the CPSU that there is no need to exempt ex-politicians and ex-staffers. However, our view is that the appointments should not be political in nature and that if ex-staffers or ex-politicians apply, and they should be able to apply because they potentially have things that they could add to these positions, they are subject to a merit selection process. Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, that is interesting indeed, is it not, that the CPSU, that the union movement, does not support a blanket ban on former politicians, on former, media, uh, on former political advisers being uh, directors of the ABC or of the SBS. There are several fundamental problems with this idea, Mr Deputy Speaker. First of all, there is nothing inherently wrong with politicians or former political staffers as a class which should automatically bar them from eligibility for serving on the board of the ABC or the SBS or indeed from any other position in our community. Secondly, as we have seen in the evidence I've cited from Donald MacDonald, in fact, a rule which excludes politicians and political staffers automatically excludes from consideration a class of persons who may have something distinctly valuable to offer. And thirdly, Mr Deputy Speaker, the gaping inconsistencies between the claimed virtue of excluding the evils of political and governmental contamination on the one hand 
and the actual drafting on the other simply highlight the absurdity of this policy. There is, for example, no ban in this bill on former senior bureaucrats, including a former Secretary of Prime Minister and Cabinet, a former Secretary of the Department of Broadband and Communications. None of these classes of person are banned. Nor, for example, are officials or former officials of political parties, a former Federal Secretary of the ALP, a former Federal Director of the Liberal Party would not be banned, nor are former union officials, nor are failed political candidates, nor are advisers to former politicians who did not attain the designated rank, which I think, according to the explanatory memorandum, is advisor but not assistant advisor. And one can easily conceive of examples where persons who operated in a strict formal sense at a lower level, in fact, had just as much influence on the politician who they served as somebody at a more senior level designated as an advisor or chief of staff. And while we're considering classes of persons who are not barred by this legislation, and if there were a skerrick of logical consistency about it would be barred, let's think about former elected members of parliaments of countries close to our own political tradition, such as New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Canada or other similar nations. Mr Deputy Speaker, this legislation is rife with gaping logical inconsistencies and, in my view, it simply, uh, the prohibition simply makes very little sense. But I would suggest, as a very minimum, uh, if we are going to go forward on this approach, uh, it would be logical, at the very least, to set some kind of time limit on the period for which former politicians and political advisers are disqualified. Because the notion that is inherent in the legislation today, as proposed, that this prohibition lasts forever, the notion that apparently you are so contaminated by political service that you can never be cleansed, is a notion which is an inherently ludicrous one, Mr Deputy Speaker. Let me turn thirdly and finally to this formalised appointment process, this so-called merit-based selection process which has been proposed in this piece of legislation. Mr Deputy Speaker, this really is the triumph of the human resources strategists. This is the approach of the government that brought you the 2020 summit, the gathering of the 1,000, the so-called best and brightest. I well remember the photograph which appeared in one newspaper, Mr Deputy Speaker, of the butcher's paper that you see so often at these kinds of events, the butcher's paper for the breakout groups, which had written across the top of it there are no stupid ideas, it said. The facilitator had wandered away after committing that piece of wisdom to the butcher's paper. Mr Deputy Speaker, I've been to a lot of these off-sites. I didn't go to Australia's national off-site, the summit, the 2020 summit, but I've been to a lot of, a lot of other off-sites. And let me tell you, Mr Deputy Speaker, there are a lot of stupid ideas. There are a lot of stupid ideas. No matter how many times you write across the top of the butcher's paper, there are no stupid ideas. There are stupid ideas, and this, Mr Deputy Speaker, is a stupid idea. The idea that we ought to have this formalised, multi-step appointment process going through the appointment of a panel, going through formal notification requirements, going through step after process step, this is a bad idea. Why ought there to be this appointment process conducted at arm's length from the government? Mr Deputy Speaker. The government is there to govern. The government is there to govern, and that includes appointing people to boards of government entities. Mr Deputy Speaker, it is no bad thing, of course, to cast the net as widely as possible, to have the widest possible range of candidates being invited to apply to become directors. That is no bad thing. Of course, that is sensible practice. But to formalise it in legislation, to formalise this involved series of steps is a triumph of process which, on this side of the House, we think is wasteful, we think is foolish, we think is unnecessary, we think is ill-conceived, Mr Deputy Speaker. So let me say this in conclusion. The idea generation factory in politics sometimes produces bad ideas. Let's be honest, we all know it. It happens from time to time. We saw one example during the last campaign, the idea of the Citizens' Assembly. It was, a, it was a silly idea. It has thankfully been dropped. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, I appeal to the government today 
to do the same thing with this bill. The ideas are silly. Drop them. Leave things as they are.